Are you curious about how long your money is going to last in your portfolio? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build this calculator that you see on screen, which can allow you to run 5,000 different simulations of your life under changing market scenarios and see at what age do you run out of money on average and the number of times out of the total 5,000 that you ran out of money at each age. Now follow along with me, it's actually quite easy. So we're just going to start with our calculator looking like this. You can go ahead and type in these values if you'd like. So we're going to assume that there's three different asset classes, stocks, bonds, and cash. And in this case with cash, we'll assume that the cash is going into some type of money market. Now each one of these is going to give us an expected annual return. And I'm using rather conservative estimates. So for stocks, you could go anywhere between 7% and 9% because that is typically what stocks will earn historically per year. 7% is a more conservative estimate. So I'm going with that. And then we also need to know their standard deviation. So we can go with a safe bet of about 15% for the annual standard deviation for stocks. Bonds will have a expected return of about 4% and a standard deviation annually of about 6%. And then money market will have a lower return of just an expected return of 2.75% and a standard deviation of about 0.25%. Again, I'm going with historical averages. Now, you're going to need another column of inputs. So whatever your starting portfolio value is, you can put here in this example, we'll assume that this person has $3 million and that they are age 60 and that they're going to retire or they are retired right now. And then we're going to assume that they want to spend, it could be one person, it could be a, a spouses, you know, like a married couple or something, and they wanna spend $150,000 uh, this year. That's like their estimate for their annual spend. And for the inflation rate, we're just going to say that it's going to go up 2% per year because that's what the uh, Federal Reserve generally targets. And we're going to put weights in stocks, bonds, and money market. So let's start off with 40% in stocks, 30% in the bonds, and 30% in the money market. All these are going to have to sum to 100%, whatever you do. So you can go ahead and just type all that into your sheet. Um, and then you can also go ahead and type these in. So this is where we're going to need to go through the uh, each year. And the person's going to age, and we're going to calculate their portfolio value as they age. So let's go ahead and just start off with the current age. So in age, I'm gonna do equals, and then I'll go over here and hit uh, that value. So there's 60 right now. For the year, uh, you could just type in uh, the year. So right now it's like 2025. I could just type it in and hit enter like that. I'm gonna do equals year, and then today inside of the year, so that when, if people like download this spreadsheet, then it'll just this will automatically be the whatever year they're currently using the file and then we're going to need to uh increment each one of these by one so the next year is going to be that value plus one and then the age is going to be equal to this value plus one and then we can just drag it down so that we can keep uh, getting older and older. And okay, so I've dragged it all the way down to the person being 130. That's probably not necessary. I wonder what, who's the oldest person that ever lived? How old are they? Okay, so I see the oldest person who has ever lived is 122 years old. That is one old lady. So let's go over here and let's just assume that nobody using this file is gonna be the oldest person in human existence and stop it at age 122. And then now let's go to uh, fill in our portfolio value. So let's just do equals, grab the initial uh, 3 million starting value from there. Our annual spend, we're just gonna start it off with what we put over here at 150,000. And then now we're gonna have to simulate uh, annual returns for stocks, bonds, and the money market. And now we're going to use this formula over here, which is going to say that the returns are going to be equal to the mean expected return, which is this value, plus a Z-score multiplied by the standard deviation. So let's just go through that with stocks real quick. So that's going to be equal to the uh, expected return for stocks. So I'll hit F4 to lock that value in. So when we uh, shift the formula down, it doesn't move. Now plus, and we can get a Z-score by doing the formula norm S 
env and then inside of that we'll put rand so this is going to come up with uh, random z scores over and over for us and then we'll multiply this z score by the annual standard deviation i'm going to hit f4 to lock that in as well so what you'll see here is that that this specific year the stocks are returning a negative 0.16 percent but let me actually just drag it down to explain the logic of what we're doing here so i'm going to drag it all the way down and so we typically expect stocks to return 7%, but that's not how stocks work. They don't just return 7% every year. We might have a year that it returns 35% or 34%, and then the next year we lose 31%. That's just how stocks are, they're more risky. So we can do the same thing with bonds and the money market. So we'll use the same formula and we'll just shift these down like this enter then we'll drag this one over to use the same formula with the money market and then we'll just shift this down to the money market and then we can actually uh, highlight both of those and double click the corner so now we have all our returns for all the asset classes each year so now what we need to do is actually figure out what is our portfolio value going to be the next year uh, at the start of the year so let's actually go ahead and assume that we just spent all this money at the start of last year although that's not the case it's going to be a more conservative estimate so if we didn't take into account the returns on our investments we would just be at this two million eight hundred fifty thousand but we had all this money that was in uh, these different asset classes so let's actually go ahead now and see uh, what happens when we uh, take into account the accumulation of our capital or losses potentially from our investments. So we'll multiply by one plus, and then we're going to have to add uh, three separate returns. So I'm gonna do plus, and then I'm gonna put close parentheses three separate times. Now in each one of these, we're gonna have to take the weight of that asset class, lock it in with F4, and then multiply it by its return for that previous year. So we just did stocks like that. Now let's do the same for bonds. So I'm gonna hit F4 to lock the weight in for the bonds. And then we'll multiply that by what bonds returned to that year. And then finally we'll do this one where we're going to click the weight of the money market. We'll hit F4 to lock it in. And then we're going to multiply that by the money market's returns for that year and hit enter. So we are going to see that based on this, we're actually down quite a bit because not only did we spend $150,000, but we lost a bunch of money, most likely in stocks as well. So we can't shoot this all the way down until we factor in what is our next year's annual spend. So if we wanted to spend $150,000 a year uh, this year, then we have to take into account inflation. So we're going to take this uh, equal to the previous year's value and multiply it by one plus and then what we put for the inflation rate and then we'll on this we'll hit f forward to lock in the inflation rate so we're gonna hit there and then now we should be able to shoot both of these all the way down by double clicking uh that corner so now what we're seeing here in this graph is basically if we start at three million here's our value of our portfolio by age and so we start at 60 with about 3 million, and then we're starting to kind of lose money. And we'll see that this basically crosses over the zero there at about age 90. So this, in this situation, or it should be 91. So it hits, it crosses over the zero at about age 91. And that's helpful to know and see, but this is only one single uh, simulation. So if I hit F9 on my keyboard in Excel, I'll rerun all these calculations. And now we see we got a new graph. And in this one, we actually run out of money from 83 going on 84. Now, if I hit F9 again, I can do it again. And this time we run out of money uh, between 84 and 85. I can hit F9 again. And now this time we uh, it actually took us till we were like 97 to run out of money. So uh, I could just keep doing that. Or what I could do is I could actually force Excel to do this simulation 5,000 separate times, which is what I'm most interested in doing. So now let's go and assume that this right here is just the first simulation and try to figure out at what age this balance is going to be negative. So we can figure out how many years into the simulation did the value go negative by using this formula equals match true 
and then we take this whole range of all the values in H in this table and we lock it in and then we find where it was less than zero and then we do comma zero and when we do that we find out that 18 rows into this so if I highlight and drag you'll see once I get there we have get the 18th row of the simulation then uh, that's when it went negative but we want to know at what age did it go negative so we can use this excel formula called offset which is going to allow us to select a reference which we'll use this uh, cell right here as a reference and then we want to go this many rows below that reference and we don't need to shift the column at all so we'll do zero for uh, column there and then we'll just hit enter and then we'll see that uh, it's saying that our value went negative at age 88 which is the case we can see that right there so now let's force excel to do this simulation uh 5,000 times so what i did is i typed one here and then i typed two here and then i just grabbed this and i just dragged it down all the way until it hit 5,000. so if i go all the way to that the bottom we'll see there's 5,000 simulations we're going to perform now what i'll do is i'll grab right here and right here and i'll hold Control shift and then hit down arrow and then i'll go to data and then what if analysis and then data table. I'll select in this column input cell and then I'll just select any blank cell. It doesn't matter which one and then I'll hit OK. What this is going to do is it's going to force Excel to perform this whole calculation 5,000 separate times. So we just did that. And now we can see in this graph the age that we ran out of money and the number of times we ran out of money in that range and so we'll see that we're most commonly running out of money uh, basically somewhere between 82 and 93 essentially based on this graph so now i can also see if i'm interested in seeing what age did i uh, on average run out of money in this case so i'll do equal to average uh if and then i'm going to grab this entire range and then i'm going to do comma and then i'm going to say that it is quote not equal to n or pound n slash a end quote so we can see that uh on average with these characteristics we ran out of money on average at 89.2 and then you might think uh maybe that's too low for you and then you might think hey i think i'm going to live longer than 89 i'm concerned about my money running out on average at 89. so what you can do now that everything is actually built out is you can go ahead and you can uh tweak things so easiest thing to tweak would either be maybe placing a higher weight in stocks rather than a lower returning asset class like money market or if you want to leave these the way they are you can then say hey uh, maybe i'm not going to live that uh that lavishly instead of spending 150,000 this year i'd rather live off of 135,000, for example and then let's hit enter there and then we can actually go ahead and we can delete that everything from simulation two and down and then just go ahead and redo this simulation with that control shift down arrow after i selected there and i'll go back to what if analysis data table column input cell select a blank cell and hit ok we'll rerun the whole analysis and we'll see now that i'm saying i'm reducing my annual spend i can see that i actually on average uh, ran out of money only at 94 now and so now this gives you the tool that you can play around with all these things and uh, see what you're comfortable with. If you would like to download the file that I made for free in this video, please feel free to click on the link in the description. And please feel free to check out my website, rhinoconnellfinance.com for all sorts of useful financial tools and services. Thank you for watching the video and please subscribe for more just like it.